In this video, we're going to convert strings into numbers and dates. But what happens if you're trying to convert something in a language which is not your own? I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So in the last two videos, we've had a look at the cast and convert functions and the try underscore cast and try underscore convert functions. So it enables us, for instance, to convert a string into a number explicitly. The computer will always try to do an implicit conversion. Here we've got what happens if you are converting a number into a string. So instead of it being three plus three equals six, it will be the string free plus the string free, making it a string free free. And additionally, we can convert strings into dates. But then the question is, well, what happens if this is, say, the Spanish date? Well, this is OK. The Spanish for February is Febrero, so it would still be Feb. But if I change it to April, that's fine in English, but it's Abril in Spanish, and we get an error. Now, we can say, OK, I don't want to see any errors by using try underscore cast, and then that will change it into a null. But wouldn't it be even better if it would actually convert it properly in the first place? Unfortunately, there's no way of doing this using the cast function, but there is a way using parse. So the parse function works exactly the same as the cast function. So it doesn't have the additional bells and whistles that the convert function does, but it does have one additional bell and whistle here. So at the moment, we still have a problem. It's saying I cannot convert to Abril 2025 to a date. But notice what it says, into a data type date using the culture blank. Culture. So that is saying, OK, it's not necessarily in your particular language, the way that you have got your computer set up. And it doesn't have to be a different language. It could be, for instance, I need to convert something from American English or British English. So. How I can get around this problem is by adding using. So using says, OK, it is not necessarily my culture. It is instead the culture of Spanish Spain. So once I've added that, then the computer goes, OK, it is a Spanish Spain date. Now, the Spanish wouldn't actually have to hyphen ABR hyphen 2025. So you can see it's giving me another error message. If I change those to spaces and if I put in the full thing, Abril, as opposed to just ABR, then you can see if I've got the right input, then I can get the right output. So without this, computer is going to give me an error message. With it, I will actually get it converted correctly. So if you haven't come across the culture section before, so this shows the language, this shows the country. Now there's a huge list. This is technically known as a .NET culture. And you can see, for instance, that Belgium, for instance, has two different languages, French and Dutch or Flemish. And you can see that we've got two different codes for the same country. So if I go down to Germany, for instance, then again, we have got three different cards. So you will find a list easily findable on the web with all of these different types of culture codes, and then you can use it in your own applications, your own programming. So what else can we use parse for? Well, suppose I was trying to get, and I'll use the cast function for this. Here is a number as a string and I want to convert it into a natural number. Well, that is fine. No problems. What if I put a pound sign at the beginning? Again, we get an error message. The computer is going, I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about. Now, if I change what I'm converting it into, into money, then the computer is better prepared and goes, oh yes, that is a money symbol. Similarly, I can put a US dollar or maybe a euro at the beginning, and it goes, ah, I know what you're talking about. However, if I was in France, for instance, I wouldn't be saying 345 
dot six seven, I'd be saying three hundred and forty five comma six seven. And now you can see the computer has interpreted this as being thirty four thousand five hundred and sixty seven. And indeed, in France, you might find the euro symbol at the end as well. And the computer is now going, OK, you've completely lost me. But if I change this to the parse, so computer is now going, OK, not entirely sure what you're doing. But if I say that we are using the culture, the French of France, the computer is going, ah, now I know what you're talking about. We're talking about France, French. And therefore, the comma is the decimal separator. And yet, yeah, that now makes all sense. And similarly, if I put the euro sign at the end, the computer's still going, yeah, I understand what you're talking about. One last example with parse. Suppose I was casting this state. OK, so we get the answer that it is the 4th of February 2025. Except I'm going to be saying that's not an American date, or it shouldn't be an American date, it should be a British date. Ooh, problem there, because we've got the month the wrong way around. Now, in Britain, we have the date at the beginning, and then the month, and then the year. In America, we'd have the month first, and then the date. So if I was changing this to the 22nd of April, 25, the computer's going, I don't know what you're talking about because it's in the American locale. So I'm going to change this from a cast to a pass. And just to show you, it doesn't actually change anything right now. But if I say I'm using the English of the US, then the computer's going, OK, yep, yeah, I'm now totally confused. I know what country you're talking about. But I'm going to change this so it uses the English of Great Britain. So it's the same language, but a different country. And now you can see the computer's going, oh, so this is the 22nd of April, 2025. So this could be really useful if you get a lot of information, perhaps from the Internet of Things, and it comes in as a string for your dates, and it's in the wrong locale for you, you can convert it using parse. So in this video, we've had a look at how we can use the parse function. We've had a look at how we can parse dates, which are written out. We've had a look at how we can parse numbers, including currency. And we've had a look at how we can have a look at a couple of things in terms of dates that could be converted a couple of ways. So you could say this is the 2nd of April 2025, or this is the 4th of February 2025. The only way to ensure that you know which way it's going is by using parse and saying it is for this particular locale. And that's the parse function. It's an extended cast function. And of course, you can also use try underscore parse if you want the computer to try something and you're not sure whether it will work. And if it doesn't work, so if I change this to the US, if it doesn't work, then give me a no. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.